may choose the best of what has gone before, the best of that which lives today, to fashion us a seed. And from the minds of those who enter in, this gift is given us, ours still to give and yet to keep. A gift of value great with life itself. And this, our heritage. In this series of heritage programs, we are privileged to meet Dr. Paul J. Tillich, author, lecturer, theologian, philosopher, and member of the faculty, Harvard Divinity School, Harvard University. In this first program, Dr. Tillich and his guests discuss philosophy and religion. Dr. Tillich is joined by Dr. Robert C. Johnson, professor of systematic theology, and Mr. Walter E. Wiest, associate professor of philosophy of religion and Christian ethics, both of Pittsburgh Theological Seminary. Dr. Tillich, you left Germany in 1933 to come to this country. Uh, would you care to comment on why you came to the United States? Yes, <clears throat> I would like very much. It was even before Hitler came to power that I was opposed to the Nazi movement. I was at that time at the University of Frankfurt am Main as professor of philosophy and uh, the Nazis had organized uh, Nazi student groups and one day they entered the University of Frankfurt and beat up all the liberal students. And I was in the midst of it. And then we had a trial and threw the students out of the university and I was, of course, active in this trial. And uh, so I uh, produced the wrath of the Nazi movements against me. <coughs> and there were many other reasons, my whole political attitude. In any case, when Hitler came to power, I was a few weeks later dismissed for my position in the University of Frankfurt. And the same summer, a few months later, Reinhold Niebuhr came to Germany and asked me to come, after I had been dismissed, to Union Theological Seminary. And then I had a very dramatic talk with the uh, Secretary of Education of Prussia, who was my highest boss, in <coughs> which I told him my position very frankly about the persecution of the Jews and my affirmation of the Old Testament, Christianity generally. And then it was clear that I couldn't stay any longer in Germany, and so I decided to follow uh, Niebuhr's invitation. Uh, Dr. Tillich, in every man's case, I suppose, there's a, a close connection generally between uh, the things which have happened to him in his own uh, life and experience and the development of his thought. Uh, would you uh, tell us a little bit more about the, the, the other turning points in your uh, biography which have uh, been influential in the development of your thought? Yes, I can... This. Uh, tell you of one very dramatic moment. I was a chaplain in the First World War and it was in the Battle of the Champagne in France. And it was one night in which many of my friends were fatally injured in a terrible battle and I had to talk to them and they died all around me. And in this night, something happened to my thought. Up to this time, I was a good German idealist of the type of Fichte, Schelling, Hegel. And in this night, 
my idealistic philosophy broke down forever. And this was one of the most important moments in my development. Ever since, I would call my own theological thinking, my philosophical thinking, a kind of critical realism, but certainly not idealism anymore. I have seen <coughs> the deepest negative side of life in this night, and my eyes were open forever to see this side also. Have there been any events that have taken place since you've been in this country that you feel have uh, had a particular bearing upon shifts in your thinking? Perhaps I could say that Corsi coming itself in the beginning yeah. was another turning point. I still was bound by many elements of my past to the kind of thinking which was traditional in Germany, <coughs> which was much more theoretical, speculative, philosophical. I came to this country and I noticed that here the practical problems were much more in the foreground than the merely metaphysical problems. And this was a great experience, which of course was not easy to digest. It took me many years before it influenced me deeper, but it did. And so my theology, especially my preaching, is now much more directed to the realities of the daily life than it was in Germany. I know you have commented in the past on uh, the transition which you made from the German language to the English language. Uh, I wonder how much effect this has had basically upon your thinking and your writing. Were you not 48 years old before you started speaking? 47. 47. I learned English. Yes. Yes. And, I and yet it has been the major vehicle of your writing. Yes, of course. I decided in the moment in which I put my foot on this continent <coughs> that now I never will write anything in German because translating things is a terrible job. It's much better to write a bad English lecture and then to have it English by students than to write it in German and then to have it translated. And this self-discipline, never writing again in German, was the basis for my limited ability to use the English language. But there was something else. The English language and the German language have a quite different type. The German language is full of nouns, and you can put half a dozen nouns together and make a new word out of it, which, of course, doesn't help to the clarity of your thinking. And so I wrote very difficult sentences in my later German writings, sometimes so difficult then when it came later on to translating them into English. I myself didn't understand them anymore. <laughs> but the uh, English language is a language of words mostly. And this makes it for much more clarity and logical consistency than German. And uh, so I learned to think through the help of this new instrument, the English language. And when, after uh, the war, 48, I came back to Germany the first time and gave a lecture in German, all my former pupils and friends were very much surprised that they could easily understand me. There were even some German colleagues who said he has become much shallower than he was. But this meant now they could understand. And that means 
in Germany, uh, you are shallow. 